This is Coogan Cassius for iFilm London. With me on the phone at the moment, I've got Joe Gallagher. How are you, Joe? Not too bad, Coogan. How are you, mate? Yeah, very well, thanks. Obviously, we're in this... Uh, well, not, you're not in this mid-season break because you've had active fighters, obviously, uh, competing. But, um, yeah, just wanted to catch up with you, really, after what happened over the weekend. Um, Stephen Smith's stunning knockout of Gary Buckland. Um, how did you assess the, 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 the five rounds that he fought prior to the knockout? Going into the, the, the fifth round, I thought um, we out and did what we, want, what we wanted to do to show that we weren't going to be bullied and um, stand our ground a little bit. Um, and then after round one, then Stephen got back to his boxing and started to dictate things. Uh, the size um, of the ring, we knew Gary would always keep coming forward. Um, he had a few trade-offs. I thought Stephen was getting the upper hand in them. And like I say, in round four, we landed a great right hand that shook Gary. Um, and we were screaming for the corner to Stephen not to go for it. He wasn't ready to go for it, but I just knew down the straight. And I said um, in the week to people who interviewed me, I fancy Stephen to stop him. And I could tell and hear the pause on the phone. I don't think he's off his head. Do you understand? But I just had the same feeling like when Andy uh, Anthony Collar for Andy Morris. No one expected Collar to stop him. And I, I just seen the way Stephen had been with sparring with Mendes and that that his power and. It was, a, it was a good fight and I just thought we were always in control and whether we knocked him out in round five or later on or won on points but I always felt we were in control of the fight in the fourth round. Um, do you think Stephen Smith has been regarded uh, as a bit of an underrated as in his, um, his actual power in his punches? Do you think that people don't always give him the credit for that? Um, I think, well, Stephen, he, he, he turned professional and had a blaze of publicity and it was a really good prospect and he was a good champion I think on in his 11 for 12 fight he beat Simpson and then beat him again and he, he made inroads very quickly I do feel then the loss to Selby um, everyone sort of like said oh um, that's the end of Stephen Smith he wasn't all that good and listen, it, 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 it always was good he always said it was an off night and he proved there at the weekend by beating a bigger stronger man and knocking him out that uh, moving up the weight division which I've been pleading him to do and he has done over the last 12 18 months and Prove that he's had five fights, I think it is now, the new weight division, and he's knocked four of them out and three of them in the first round, so you can't ask for more than that. Um, does this the, um, Lee Selby defeat, is it still play on his mind? Does it play on your mind? No. No, no not at all? No, 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 not at all. I, I think, like I said, I need to do the part. I think Gary Buckland's lost to John Warren, made Gary Buckland a better fighter, and I think Stephen Smith's lost to Lee Selby has made Stephen Smith a better fighter and regrouped his matured and he's got better and uh, I think everyone's seen the other night there a really good Stephen Smith, a mature Stephen Smith and a, a, a fighter that landed, uh, as people is calling it, a world class knockout punch. Mm. Is that a fight that you'd entertain taking for Stephen, a rematch with uh, Selby? I've been in two different weight divisions at the moment, aren't there? Stephen Smith, yeah. he's a stable mate, um, like you say, he's now took, I, I, I'd assume, Gary Buckland's mandatory position for the European. He's number seven in the WBC, which Gary Buckland's position was. So I assume Stephen would take that. So and I know Lee Selby's pushing on for world honours at featherweight. So it's very much like, and I've said to Stephen, the Jamie Moore, Matthew Macken thing. Matthew Macken didn't feel he had to fight Jamie Moore to prove himself. He's gone on since. And I established a credit afterwards. And as I said to Stephen Smith, you don't have to go back to put things right. You can go on and move forward. Do you know what I mean? Many other fighters have done. Look at Darren Barker at the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, as well, um, we know now. We now know that Scott Quigg will uh, f face Salinas on the undercard of uh, High and Fury. So it's a it's a great platform to be uh, for Scott to be fighting on. Listen, it's a great. It's a huge thanks to everybody involved who's made a kid from Berry there in Greater Manchester make his dream come true. How many people? How many people? dream of it but actually make it come true so all thanks to everyone involved with like Sky and the Hearn Matchroom and the Booth Mick Hennessy but to give the kid a platform like that on a pay-per-view event to fight for a world title in front of 18,000 people on a big card like that that's what dreams are made of now and I think Scott Quick his training's going fantastic I've just finished training him around the track and I said to him listen we've got to give you a bit of time off he's well ahead of schedule and the kid that will raise his game another 5 10 percent with the world title on the line. And obviously you look at the weekend's results of Martinez beating Romero. 
that, that's a huge incentive. And I jokingly said to Scott Quick, wow, you could be a, a, a two uh, belt holder world champion by Christmas time, beat Salinas, and let's go and try and get a, 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 a unification fight with Martinez. Mm. What, what do you what do you say to the people that have questioned the credibility of uh, that WBA title that he's fighting for, uh, considering the position that Rigondo's in? Well, I, I just think I think people it, it's been it, it's the WBA world title, and what happens is Rigondo was the world champion. He had the unification fight, so they, they become a super champion. It's not Scott Quick's fault. It's the governing bodies, the titles that they're being given to declare a super champion. But at the end of the day, Scott Quigg's going to fight for the WBA world title. Um, Again, Salinas and there's other good world champions that have that belt and aren't frowned upon or anything else at all. I just think it's that people are trying to make a statement. As far as we're concerned, we're fighting for the world title, the WBA world title. Hmm. Um, Liam Smith obviously has got his uh, British title shot coming up next month. in Liverpool on the 21st of September against uh, Eric Oshieng. So, how's he, how's he looking at the moment, Joe? Well, Liam, listen, Liam's had a fantastic camp. We'll be very lucky. Liam spent three, four weeks uh, early on in camp sparring a kid called Nessel uh, Michaela, a 17 and 0 light middleweight prospect from America, who is absolutely the double of Eric Oshieng in style wise, but a better version, and we've had. I think it's something like close to, I think it's like 70, 80 rounds with him. So the style we've got nailed down now. We're just conditioning and he's had a break from sparring now. We'll be ready to pick it up again now next week. Um, and we're really confident. And obviously with both Paul winning and Stephen winning, there's a huge incentive now for Liam to win the British title in Liverpool on Sky and for three brothers to create, to create history. Um, it's something the Guinness Book of Records, I think, I get them involved because it's never been done before to have three brothers actively be British champions at the one time and where it's going to be a great night September 21st it's history in the making Why don't you go to whole hog and uh, move Callum Smith up to light heavyweight and uh, you can get the four of them Well that's who's not to say that's not being discussed at the moment Coogan Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but when are we looking at Paul Smith next, uh, obviously, for his d- defence of this British title? When are we looking for well, that? Well, I think, I think Paul was wanting to possibly box on, on the 21st, which was in London, at a, a proper box show, but obviously his brothers are fighting that night, so that's it. So I think Paul's looking now, he's, he's chopping at the bit, he was training the wild card in LA, and he wants to fight in October, and I think uh, hopefully he'll be fighting in October, so... That'll be good for him to be fighting in October, and he, he can't wait. Obviously, uh, I, I've mentioned a couple of times I'd love him to. If Stieglitz wanted a, a, a defence or a volunteer, Paul Smith is more than willing to step in, and I think that's a, a fight we're well away. Your Frotches, your Groves, your Andre Ward, uh, if there's something else, but Stieglitz, I, I think I look at him a little bit like like the, like the Daniel Gale of the middleweight division. If there's a weak link, possibly that could be in it, and if that's a Um, what's the situation regarding Anthony Crawler? Um, do you know when he'll be out again? Well, Anthony Crawler, obviously there's a um, talk there now with Ricky Burns and Billy Nelson offering me £25,000 if the fight he'll win and all that. And I'm like, well, never mind £25,000, just make the fight. There's a battle of Britain there. I know there's Terence Crawford, Bob Arams singing his praise, but what Terence Crawford brings to the table is not beat no one of no. He's with a, uh, a governing body, but I think that's a... And quite a tricky fight for Ricky Burns in America. Um, I think I was Ricky Burns and I was fighting in America. It had to be some type of unification fight. And while there's a, a domestic fight there with Anthony Crawler, who, I, in my eyes, is just deserving of it after beating uh, Gavin Reese, who was uh, a former world champion at the weight division before, just fourth world title, former European champion at lightweight. I, I think Anthony Crawler's just deserving of it. And I think there's a, a good battle of Britain fight there that, that could take place before the end of the year. And, Hmm. So, I mean, all in all, your your gym's looking in a very healthy situation, uh, healthy position, rather, sorry, not situation, position at the moment, British champions, potential world champion next, you know, it it couldn't be going better for you at the moment, Joe. No, listen, my nine fighters, I've said to them, I want all nine of them to hold the belt of some sort, and I think at the moment, there's six of them that have, um, and I think, like I say, with um, um, got a quick win in a world title, they can get Callum Smith the belt, Callum Johnson something, and Jose Burton, 
uh, an area title or something would be a fantastic achievement. But listen, they're a talented bunch of kids and I'm privileged and humbled to be asked to train so many talented fighters. But the atmosphere in the gym is fantastic. We're on a right road. Like someone said to me, it's like a juggernaut at the moment. There's no stopping years. And hopefully that continues September the 21st and be absolutely rolled into the MEN arena and lift that world title. But like I say, we're fighting a good Cuban who's got a great amateur pedigree. He beat Zoo Shimming. He beat Gamboa as an amateur. He was a, a really good class amateur. And um, it's no give me, uh, but hopefully there'll be crowd behind him. And uh, Scott Creep will become world champion. And what a fantastic year that is up to now. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. All right, well, listen, Joe, I know you're probably in Nando's at the moment. Um, no, I'm not. I've just finished the track with Scott Quick and I'm about <laughs> to go home. I'm just at the post office and in my hands is a DVD that's been sent to me from board, from abroad of the Cube and of Scott Quick's opponent. So I'm going to go home, shove that in and start studying tonight. Like a true professional trainer you are, Joseph. Well, you only get out what you put in, Coogan, so there you go. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much for talking to us. So no, thank I'm, you for phoning me. And listen, I, listen it's, I, I think it's been a fantastic weekend um, for boxing. There's been some fantastic fights, but what a performance by Darren Barker. I just want to wish him congratulations to him, Tony Sims. And I've been talking to the fighters this week. At first, you don't succeed. Try, try, try again. And Darren Barker replicates that this weekend. What a fantastic performance. And, well done to Tony Simpson and the team. Absolutely, it's good of you to say that, Joe. All right. Yeah, no problem. Well, listen, like I said, thank you. Uh, I'm sure I'll uh, bump into you as soon as the, the season starts again in September. So uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with you then, Joe. No problem, Coogan. Thanks for calling me, mate. And uh, I'll see you soon. And enjoy the rest of your holiday, my friend. And here's to a, a successful new season coming up, mate. Definitely. All right. Thank you very much. That was Joe Gallagher there. For iFilm London with Coogan Cassius here, thank you very much.